How's it going everyone? CJ from On The Grow here and today what we're going to be doing is a soil nutrient additive experiment. Now this is something we haven't really done in our grow space before. We've started kind of playing around with worm castings, but as for other nutrient additives, we haven't actually begun to do that until today. So today what I've got is we've got a nutrient called Joyful Dirt, an organic fertilizer here. Uh, that's an 815 NPK. And I wanted to see how it would do if we added it directly to some burpee organic potting mix, because we've been using the soil recently and it does a great job. It's the very first soil we ever grew with and it's one of our favorite soils personally, but we wanna see how we can get better growth with it. So you guys know us, what we like to do is we like to do experiments where we see how we can affect the growth, appearance, taste, and everything surrounding microgreens using different factors, and this one is gonna be nutrient specific. So 10 days ago, what I did is I took 10 grams of Snowball Y Improved Cauliflower, weird name, but I did uh, 10 grams of that per tray into four different trays. The first tray was just the plain soil. It only had three cups of the burpee organic soil put into it. The second tray had the three cups of that burpee soil plus an additional one quarter teaspoon of the joyful dirt added to it. Third tray had uh, the same three cups of uh, soil plus one half teaspoon. And then as for the last tray, tray number four, it had the three cups of burpee soil, plus it had one full teaspoon of this joyful dirt added to it. So like I said, we added this in during the beginning phases of this grow. We mixed this in before we ever seeded the tray. This is not something we added later down the line. This was mixed into the soil from the get-go to see how it would affect the growth if we just watered with only water. Then what we did is we actually watered it and stacked it up for a four-day germination period. This broke down to three days with weight and one day in blackout where they were allowed to stretch just a little bit to make uh, harvesting easier. I noticed that whenever we added the joyful dirt in initially with the soil and then we went through the germination process, those trays which had the joyful dirt added to it actually germinated quite a bit slower. However, what I did not do whenever I did this is I didn't do a full grow. So I wanted to see how this actually fully grows to the end with this joyful dirt to see what kind of results we would have. So that's where we're at today. We're on day 10 of this experiment and these cauliflower right here have now been under light for six full days. So everything is looking really happy. And what I did is I kind of rotated these guys. So I mixed up the order in which they were placed on this shelf every now and then to kind of randomize uh, their positioning under the lights, you know, which one was closer to the wall and which one was closer to the uh, front edge and stuff like that, just to kind of randomize it a little bit. That is where we're at with this experiment. And now what I need to do is I need to get all of these pulled out of underneath these lights. And if you guys are curious, these are three of the Barina T5 20 watt LEDs that we suggest to a lot of people to get started. We just think they're a great light and they do a good job, um, especially for the price point. Now let's go ahead and get these pulled off and put onto our table here. So starting with this, I will just start pulling these and setting them. Tray number two. Tray number three. And this poor, poor tray number four. Just look how scraggly this guy's looking. All right, so I've got all these pulled off the shelf. Let's go ahead and take a close look at all the growth on these. So again, the first tray right here had none of the additive whatsoever of that joyful dirt. The second tray right here had a, a quarter teaspoon. Tray number three right here had a, a half a teaspoon. And then tray number four had a full teaspoon. So let's go ahead and start over here on number one. So number one, the crop looks very healthy. I'm very happy with the growth on it. It looks very full. Cotyledon size is nice, and I'm really loving the green coloration on these uh, cotyledons. And I think overall, let's check out our stem coloration. Yeah, we got some nice purples happening in here. And overall, the uh, health on this crop looks very, very nice. It's very uniform growth. It's not uh, sporadic at all, and I'm really, really digging the growth out of just the soil. On to tray number two. Now, immediately side by side, I noticed that tray number two is just slightly shorter uh, then tray number one. So that is uh, something that I'm noticing right off the bat. And as for the coloration of the cotyledons side by side, I feel like they are actually quite similar in their appearance. So there's not too much of a difference there between the uh, co uh, cotyledon coloration between these two groups. And I was really hoping that there was gonna be more coloration differences here. So let's go ahead and take a look at our uh, stems. And I feel like I'm not seeing um, as much purple here as I did on the, yeah, I just feel like I'm seeing a lot more purple in these stems over here on just the soil. 
So, so far, not the greatest. I mean, it does look um, nice and even on top. The growth does look super solid across. And it does look like a very healthy product. I just don't know how much benefit the uh, Joyful Dirt has added so far. So now let's go over to tray number three. This one is very similar to uh, tray number two. I would say it's got a bit more of that uh, kind of rounding to it than uh, the tray number two. And there is a weird germination section right here down the middle with this tray. And you can see a little bit slower growth over here in the back of this. So overall, I mean, it's good. I'm not in love with how kind of ununiform the growth is on this tray. And then onto tray number four, which is this really, really, really bad germination. So this is something, like I said in the beginning, we noticed that it was just having really slow germination here. And I thought it was for sure gonna recover, but I feel like the one teaspoon is just way too much uh, for microgreens. And in fact, I wonder if this product overall is just too much for microgreens to be added in from the beginning, because it seems like everything that had it that had the uh, Joyful Dirt added into it does seem to be behind the actual just soil only tray right there. So you kind of notice that we have, you know, it starts up as high and then it kind of works its way down to um, lower and lower and kind of worse growth overall throughout all of these trays. So tray number four, again, incredibly sporadic growth, very bad germination. Uh, we got some like tall ones, we got some really short ones, some that didn't germinate it at all. We got some like death and decay here in the middle and overall this tray is just looking really unhappy. Let's go ahead and take a peek. So we have like a few little roots kind of popping out here, but overall, you know, not a whole lot. Let's compare that to tray number one. Oh, you can just see the immediate difference there between the two root structures and how healthy these guys are compared to uh, the one that had the full teaspoon added. So that's it for a first quick glance. What I'm gonna do now is go ahead and harvest all these trays. I don't know that I'm gonna be able to harvest this tray over here because it's, I think it's just too uh, sporadic in its growth and kind of low, but I will be able to harvest these two. And what we can see is, did this have more flavor? Did these have a higher harvest weight? Because sometimes even though the growth may be shorter on these uh, other trays, the stems could actually be nice and thick and uh, the cotyledons can be juicier than the potential uh, first tray over here. So we will find all that out after I harvest. Before I get into harvesting though, if you guys wouldn't mind, go ahead and smash that thumbs up button because it really does help out our YouTube channel. If you guys are feeling extra generous, be sure to click that subscribe button and the notification bells. That way you guys get notified as soon as we release new content. I'm gonna go ahead and get to harvesting. I will see you guys here in just a moment. So enjoy me harvesting these. Check out my 3D printed knife sheath. Sink. Gotta love 3D printing technology. All right, so I'm gonna try to harvest these into uh, this little um, reusable container here. That way I don't have to use so many plastic bags. So it's just a little uh, food prep container that I've got. Make sure my scale's zeroed out. So we're gonna start off here with the uh, tray that I said I wasn't gonna harvest. I'm gonna go ahead and just try to get a gram uh, weight from this, even though the growth isn't that solid. And then we'll likely just kind of hopefully see if these are still edible. Oh man, this is... This is gonna be a rough harvest here. These guys are barely holding on. All right, I had to make sure my knife was super sharp because these guys aren't rooted very well and it's very, very easy to pull them out. So now let's try this again with a much sharper knife. Oh, there goes our dryer. I don't think this is gonna be a good harvest either way. Oh man, there's so many roots in this. One eternity later. All right, I think this one's gonna be a lost cause here. This is gonna be too hard to harvest. Okay, so. Let's say tray number four, we're gonna just disqualify it. It's gonna get a DNF, did not finish the experiment. This one is out. Bum -ba -bum, tray number three, so we're gonna work from four back to one. Number four is disqualified, let's check out tray numero trace. So this one actually does have a pretty decently healthy root structure on it. Uh, they are very long, but at least it's got some roots to hopefully hold it down as I harvest this. And so we're sitting at 70 grams for tray number three. Okay, on to tray number two. So immediately I'm noticing this one's harvesting a lot easier. Uh, it seems like it's much more uh, rooted than the other two. So let's go ahead and just take a peek since we did that for the other one. Oh, the water. So the roots are much, much stronger as you guys can see right there. Much better looking root structure. Okay, that's a very full one. So we had 70 for the first, we are at 89. Oh, come on, go to 90. Nope, oh, I made it go down to 88. 
And finally, the tray number four or number one, which had uh, no nutrient additives whatsoever. This is just the plain soil. You guys will notice whenever I harvest, uh, number one, if you can any, pull out any root structures like this, just go ahead and pull that off. You can kind of snap it with your fingers, just toss it back into the tray. Okay, that's it for the soil tray. Probably got like a gram of stragglers right here, but we are at 104 for the uh, harvest weight on the just plain soil. So quickly recapping, uh, the plain soil had a total harvest weight of 104. The tray number two, which had a quarter teaspoon of the joyful dirt added to it, had a harvest weight of 89 grams. And then the tray number three, which had half a teaspoon of this joyful dirt added to it, um, had a harvest weight of 70 grams. And then as for tray number four, you guys saw this tray is just so bad. I think we'd maybe get like 15 grams, maybe 20 grams from this tray, but even that is unharvestable because there's just so much death and decay in this uh, tray right here. So this one is just a DNF, did not finish the experiment. Now it is time for a taste test. I'm gonna do something a little bit differently here because I want an unbiased opinion. I'm gonna call in a celebrity guest to taste test these since she doesn't know which tray is which and hasn't been here for it. Mandy, I need you to taste test these and let me know what you think. Okay. Start it from there, to, from the right, over. Right over. Or however you want to do it. I know which tray is which. I just realized that I'm wearing the microphone, so you gotta talk pretty loud whenever you describe it. You need me to yell? <laughs> <laughs> The first tray was actually really mild. Um, I didn't really taste much at all. It was a very slight brassica flavor, but it wasn't like any oomph. <laughs> no oomph, okay. So the, the first one she tasted, which was tray number three, she said didn't have a lot of oomph to it. Something new she hasn't tasted before. It, like at first it was like kind of mild and it just like flavor. Good. Nice. <laughs> so tray uh, number two, Kind of mild and then had a nice kick to it. So overall, that one's your favorite so far? Yeah. Okay. Right, Much enough. better than the first one. Okay. I wish that there is like the slightest hint of bitterness, but it's like barely noticeable. I think I only noticed it because I just drink a bunch of coffee. Two's your favorite. The first one we tasted was not. And then the third one was pretty comparable to number two. Yeah, these two are, are, are very close. All right, that is it. Get out of the grill room now. Okay, I'm gonna go back to writing stuff. Bye! <laughs> she said that her favorite was tray number two right here, uh, which had the quarter teaspoon of the joyful dirt. Her, she said her second favorite was the first tray, which actually had no additives whatsoever. And then her least favorite was the one that had the half teaspoon of the joyful dirt added to it. So I'm gonna taste this real quick to see if I can taste the bitterness that she tasted, just out of curiosity. So I do, I see what she's talking about. There's a slight, I mean, very, very slight bitterness to it. Overall though, I think it has a great brassica flavor and I really enjoy the tray number one, which had none of the joyful dirt. Now this is the one with a quarter uh, teaspoon of the joyful dirt. I noticed a lot more crunch on the quarter teaspoon. So maybe it was a healthier product or it was more stressed. One of the, one of the two. Thank goodness I've been cleaning my pores. Skin's looking good. I would have to agree with Mandy then. Yeah, I think that uh, the tray number two right here was my favorite flavor. This one actually had a really nice punch to it. I would say that the regular also was just really, really nice. Um, though it did have a slight, slight, slight bitterness to it. And I think that's just because it was slightly ahead on growth compared to everything else. But so far, tray number two is my favorite. So that's it for harvest weight and taste test. Oh, we didn't do a side-by-side -side appearance comparison. So let me flip this and let's get in close here. Okay, so this is just the plain uh, dirt one. And I think overall the appearance is really nice on this. Let me get a little pinch of this. Let's take a close look here. So there was a little bit of that purple coloration that I saw on the stems. I'm not seeing a whole lot of it right now, mainly because we have a big purple light. So let me stand between me and the purple light. So I'm not seeing a whole lot of that purple right here on the edge, but I did see some when we were first looking at it. Overall though, the appearance does look nice. We have nice white stems, nice green cotyledons. Uh, I'm very happy with the height on this. I feel like it is slightly taller than I want it, but overall I think it is a great height on this. 
As for tray number two, again, not seeing a whole lot of that purple that I saw on uh, the first tray on that Burpees Organic Soil Only, but I do love the coloration of this. The cotyledons do look really nice and dark and green. And I think that this is a very healthy, healthy looking product. And I'm really happy with the height on this one, uh, especially. I think that this is the uh, perfect height that you're really looking for here in microgreens, which is just about, um, I don't know what you call that, too many knuckles. <laughs> I forgot what those are called. Somebody teach me anatomy. So it's about a half a finger length, which I think is a good length. I do have big hands though. So that's probably, I don't know, two, two inches. All right, and on to uh, the last tray. So this is the one that had the quarter teaspoon. I'm not noticing much of a difference between uh, tray number two and tray number three for the appearance. The stems do look good. The cotyledons are nice, nice dark colors. And overall, I think that the crop is really, really beautiful on all three of these. So as for a winner of appearance, I wouldn't say that there really is any. I do like the height more on the uh, quarter teaspoon one, but what I could do is just harvest the uh, joyful, uh, sorry, the um, burpee only about a day or two earlier. And I think I get that same height and I'd be very happy with it overall. And we'd probably eliminate that bitterness that came with it. All right, so I had to run and calculate my cost real quick. So let me go ahead and pop up a screen where I've got all four of those trays side by side. So that way we can show the uh, cost for each one of these trays. Starting with tray number one, which was the plain soil only, we had a cost of $1.13 for just the soil. So that's just the three cups of the Burpee Organic Soil. And since there was no additives, that is the total cost. We are at $1.13 for that tray. Now for tray number two, we had the same three cups of soil, which was $1.13, plus a quarter teaspoon of that Joyful Dirt, which comes out to 31 cents for that quarter teaspoon and that is $1.44 total for that tray. Tray number three had the same three cups of soil at $1.13, plus half a teaspoon at 62 cents, which brings the total for tray number three to $1.75. And as for tray number four, this is the one that had the full teaspoon plus the three cups of soil, so $1.13 for soil, plus the $1.25 for the full teaspoon of the Joyful Dirt, which brings the total cost to $2.38. And 38 cents. So overall for this experiment, I mean to have the Joyful Dirt one which gave us the better flavor for the added cost of 31 cents, I'm on the fence for that. I think that's a little high compared to most nutrients that we've used in our grow space. Generally when I add about 31 cents of cost to a tray, we're doing something that's going to give us like a really um, a huge, huge boost to our product. For example, for me to mix up a uh, full three gallon reservoir um, of ocean solution. I think the cost is only like 50 cents or something and I'm able to water a whole bunch of trays with that and uh, just the cost goes a lot further than what I'm noticing with the Joyful Dirt. Now the cool thing about this Joyful Dirt is it actually claims to, so you can see right there, it says something about adding this directly to water to um, see how it does. So I think that's what I'm gonna be doing next is I'm gonna try this out as a hydroponic nutrient because I think that adding this to the soil in the beginning is negatively affecting the germination. And this is something that we've noticed no matter what crop we do. If we add too much nutrient too soon to our microgreens, generally you're gonna slow down the germination. You just wanna really help them get through germination and then begin adding the nutrients is what we've noticed. But we're gonna continue to play with that because maybe there's some nutrients out there that do do better um, with some nutrients added in the beginning, maybe just not so much. So that's really it for this experiment. Again, I'm gonna continue to play around with the Joyful Dirt to see how it does if we add it as a hydroponic nutrient, or maybe if we just do a bigger tray and we'll play around that quarter teaspoon mark. Maybe we'll try to do um, even smaller amounts than that, like an eighth of a teaspoon and stuff around there to see if we can get uh, this growth any better. What we can also try doing is introducing this later, like I said, as a hydroponic nutrient. So we can go through the whole germination phase, get everything nice and even, and then begin bottom watering with different ratios of the Joyful Dirt to see how it actually affects the growth. Because if it does do well there, I would think that this would be more beneficial because we're adding like a teaspoon to a full three gallon reservoir instead of to just a single tray, which will jack up the cost so much. Well guys, that is it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to give us a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give us a thumbs down. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the section below. And we'd love to get those answered for you as soon as we possibly can. Our Instagram and our Facebook are both at On The Grow Farms and our website is www.onthegrow.net. Thank you so much, have a great day, and keep on believing. And guys, grow you some microgreens, because they're a lot of fun. Bye. <laughs>